for a special program, a series of broadcasts, daily broadcasts on the State of the Union, the union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we have been looking at the business of tell my people to return to me, say the Lord. Tell my people to return to me. And now we have been at it. It's beginning to be quite a while. And in the past uh, couple of days, we have been looking at a, a new series, a new dimension in the business of why God would be demanding that his people return to him. And we said a few days ago that there are certain dimensions to this business of our calling as we popularly refer to, refer to it. Now by the word our calling, we're not necessarily referring to our ministry calling, although that's just but one dimension of the business of our calling. The business of our calling entails at least three different dimensions. One is the calling to Christ as an end in itself. The calling to Christ. Christ is the end result. Christ is the purpose, is the object, is the subject. But then there is the business of our calling in him, being in him, having life in him, having existence in him. And we have referred to that as our new creation realities. That which we have become by reason of Christ. That which was attained when we came to Christ. Made available to us to be. Not to walk at, to be. Just by being in Christ. And of course the third dimension is the doing dimension. We are called to do, not just to be, not just as an end in itself. It says we are God's workmanship in Christ, created unto good works. So there is a doing component to our calling in Christ. That we can refer to as our service in Christ, or if you like, ministry. So we have been looking at certain buzzwords, commonly bandied about, but obviously without proper understanding of the words as they are constituted in Christ. So in Christ, for example, we are sanctified, we are made righteous, we are made sinless. In Christ, we come onto the platform where there is remission of sin. Remission being a purging, a blotting out. That is, it no longer exists. Now, over the past two, three days or thereabouts, we have, we have examined some of these things. Particularly yesterday, we looked at the, words, the business of the word righteousness. And the other day, we looked at the word sanctification. Today, I want to address or bring up a very popular, common, often misused word, which is the word holy, or if you like, our holiness. It is generally or popularly understood that holy or holiness has to do with something that we do, a common mistake. And this is exactly why it has become necessary for God to say, tell my people to return to me. We are supposed to take our cue. We are supposed to take our cue from him. Everything is supposed to derive from him. He says, in him we live. In him we have our being. Therefore, in him we will derive all these things. Holiness, sanctification, and what have you. But before I get ahead of myself, let's Rewind a bit 
so that we can take a couple of scriptures, a couple of scriptural references to help us make the point into this business in the matter of our holiness. Why God has to say, return to me in holiness, for example. So we will start with Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45, and it says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Please watch carefully the wording of the verse. Watch the construction of the words. Watch how the words are put together. It says, I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Today that will be out of the land of the world. Or if you like, out of the land of the Gentiles. I am the one who brought you out of the darkness in this world into my marvelous light, which we now call being in Christ. So it says, I am the one who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Now, if you are looking at the scriptures particularly, or if you go back to look at them in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45, after the word God, for I am the one that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God, after that word, you see a colon. Not a semicolon, or a comma, or a full stop, or anything else, but a colon. A colon means what you read next is generally an explanation of what you read before. So he says, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. And then thankfully, it actually uses the word therefore. Otherwise, I would prefer to have put the word therefore right after the colon. It says, to be your God, colon. In proper English, it would be, to be your God. In that respect, you will be holy because I am holy. In being your God, you be holy because I am holy. In other words, I took you out of Egypt to be your God so that you would be like me in being holy. I'm getting ahead of myself. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2. It says, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. You see the connection again. He is tying our being holy to something. Him being our God. We are holy because he is our God who in himself is holy. Third scripture, Leviticus 20, 26. And you shall be holy unto me, colon, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. Now you see the word just like the one in Leviticus 11.45 where it says that I took you up out of the land of Egypt. Took you up out of Egypt is the same word here as sever, to cut off from other people. I cut you off from other people so that you will be mine, me, the Holy God. In that respect, being mine, the Holy God, I make you holy. You'll be holy because you are mine. All right, let's take a more definitive one. In case there's still somebody shaking his or her head and wondering, what is he talking about? Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 2, it says, Grace be to you and peace from, our, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. In other words, he chose us in Christ so that we will be holy. Why? Because Christ is holy. Now, what's my point? What, is, what, what has this got to do with telling my people to return to me? Tell my people to return to me in their understanding of the word holy and therefore holiness. Tell my people to return to me and take their definition, 
let their understanding of the word holy or holiness derive from me who is God all by myself. I separated you from the rest of the world so that you would be like me, separate all by myself, a peculiar people. What's the next one? A holy nation. Now the common, the common word there would be separated unto God. Yes? That's often the one we use when we are defining consecration. Separated unto God. So everything that God defines as holy, first of all, has an attachment with God himself. It is the attachment to God that defines the thing as holy. Not because of something that the thing or the person has done. So outside of God, you cannot be holy. So you cannot by yourself attain or achieve holiness. It has to be tied to God who is holy. Now that's one understanding. Let's take the flip side of it. Almost the same thing, but just for the sake of deepening our understanding. Now God says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 19. In fact, virtually all of them. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Now you see, the mistake that we commonly make is in understanding I am holy to be a description of God. No. He is not saying I am, that is I, God. He's not saying I am red, for example, or, or I am hungry, for example, which will be a description of a state. Huh? It will be a description of a state of his. I am holy is not a description of God. It's not a description of, it's not a description of some characteristic of God. Rather, God says, I am. I am what can be understood as holy. I am holy. I am the state of being called holy. Therefore, holiness would be what? Being like God. <sighs> that makes sense? Thank you. Being like God. When you understand the statement, I am holy, he is not saying I am separated from everybody else, although that's correct from our first definition. He is saying, I am the thing. I am the bread of life. Not because he was made in a bakery. That would be descriptive. I am it. I am it. I am the sustenance of life. I am it. So if we eat of him, we would have life. That's why Jesus said that if you don't eat my bread or my flesh or drink my blood, you have no life in you. So he says, I am holy. I am what can be understood as holy. So the next time you want to define holy, what three letter word should you say? God. Nothing else is holy but him. He said, I am. I constitute what is holy. I am what can be understood as holy. I am. What is the meaning of I am? Present, continuous. He is right now. He is it right now. And every time that is now, he will be it. Moving forward and moving backwards, I am. Holy. I am. Bread of life. I am. The rock. I am whatever else you want to understand I am to be. So he said to, to, to what's his name? Moses. Upon being asked, okay, so who will I say to these children of Israel sent me? He said, tell them what? I am. He said, before now your fathers did not know me but by the name of Lord. He said, but now I'm introducing myself to you in a dimension that you haven't known. I am. So, but we keep saying, I am that I am. He is saying, I am that which is always. 
ever is, ever will be. So in, in saying that, he, he says, I am holy. So when he says, be you holy, for I am holy, he doesn't say it to just about anybody. He says it to people that he has called to himself. He says it to things that he has separated to himself for his use. So the things that are holy in the temple, they are holy because God said so. Not because oil was poured on them. They became holy because God said so. Reserve that thing unto my purpose. Therefore, that thing is hallowed, sacred, consecrated, reserved, holy unto God. Same for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is referred to as holy because it is reserved for God. So if we are going to understand our holiness, we must come back to God's original idea of it. So that we can return to him properly in defining every aspect of our relationship with him. We must take our cue. The thing must be defined in God, otherwise he will have nothing. Or rather, what we have will be a system of works. You are trying to do something to appear holy. And I'll get to that in a minute. Just like we said yesterday and the day before. I am it because I am in Christ. I am it because I've had a bath. Or I'm wearing a white dress. My subsequent behavior is influenced because I am it. My behavior does not make me it. IT. My behavior proceeds from the fact of it. I am holy because I am connected to God in Christ. Therefore, I behave in a peculiar way, which we generally misunderstand as holy, but really should be an expression of our state of holy, which is called holiness. So a man who, who, who does certain things in, in trying to appear holy will just be full of works. A man who is genuinely holy does not have to do anything to prove that he is holy. Just like you say, he is God all by himself. He does not have to, he does not have to explain himself to anybody. He does not have to prove himself to anybody. He is God just by himself. He is not defined by anything else other than himself. Now, that is the state that we are to understand these words. Why? Why is it so critical that we make this clarification? Because it puts God at the center of existence. It puts God at the center of our understanding. Any other understanding, we put ourselves at the center of it. Now we begin to do things, so we begin to measure holiness by our state. And that won't be good enough, because it will now be subject to us. Holy or holiness cannot be subject to us. Why? Because it is defined in the person of God. So holiness is defined in God. It is not a definition of God. Rather, it's the other way around. God defines holy. Is that too much? Now, our dear great brother departed, Miles Munro, in, in, in teaching us about purpose. He said, purpose is to be found in the mind of the creator of the thing. It hasn't changed. The understanding of holy is to be found in the mind of the person who first used the word to describe anything. And in describing anything, he first described it in himself. He said, I am holy. So if you want to be holy, what should you do? Go to God. Get reconnected with God. Now, in him, you can be defined as holy. Not described, defined. In him, we have our being. In him, we consist and have our being. This is the critical issue. Acts chapter 17. In him, we consist and have our being. In him, no other definition will be enough. 
Now, God is what may be defined as holy because he stated himself to be holy. Holiness, therefore, de derives from God who defines it and is therefore characterized in being like God. Holy is God. Holiness is being like him. Righteous is God. He said in one of the Psalms, he said, I am righteous. In other words, God is the one who is righteous. And he declares us righteous because we are in Christ. He imputes righteousness unto us because of our faith in him. For Abraham, in what he had said to Abraham. To us, because of Jesus. So this thing is imputed to us because of our status in Christ. Full stop. Not because of something you do or don't do. What you do or don't do is rather an expression of that thing that you are. And we are saying, return to the understanding of these things because it says that we should walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we have been called. If we have been called in Christ, we are sanctified. We are already righteous. We are already holy. We are already sinless. And all these precious blood walls that we bandy about. We are already those things. Ab initio, from the very beginning, or as they say, from the get-go. The issue is the expression of it, the one that people see. We are so concerned about the one that people see that we begin to do the one that people see so that people can see. Now that's the error because we begin to pander to what people think of us and we begin to compare ourselves with ourselves. We become the standard of measurement. And in that very fact, we have turned from God. The very moment anything about God begins to be defined by a human being, we have turned from God. So he says, tell my people to return to me. Not just in all these other things, but today in the business of our understanding of the business of holy and or holiness. Now, so yes, because I have been reserved unto God's service, because I am connected with God, because I have been separated from what have you unto God, again, I won't, I won't do certain things. Okay, let's put it this way. Because I am married, and you better hear it, I am married. Because I am married, I will not be found in certain circumstances. Because those, those types of circumstances don't define or don't, don't complement my status as a married person. So you won't find me, for example, in a secluded place with somebody of the opposite sex, only two of us. Not going to happen. I won't do certain things because of this. But this thing that I refuse to do, any man can choose that he doesn't want to be found in, 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 a, in, a, in a secluded place with a woman. That's not what makes him married. Anybody can do that. But a married man is of necessity expected to behave in a certain way. So long ago, God said to me, since you are married, stop behaving like somebody who is not married. Since you have eaten, stop behaving like somebody who is hungry. So since you have eaten, you have had, a, you have had your fill, what are you still doing in the kitchen, for example? What are you still doing hanging around where people are serving food? He's trying to explain something to me. Your behavior should necessarily derive from is a state of being. I am holy because I am in Christ. Now we can take it a further step deeper. It is either God declares a thing to be holy or it is holy because it has a God component about it. That's the third phase of our description of the word holy or holiness. It is either God declares a thing holy or it is holy because it has a God component. For example, we agree that Christ is holy, but there is something about Christ that is a God component. The Bible refers to Christ as the image of God. He is the physical representation of the invisible, that which cannot be seen, God. So if the reality of God, the Father, is holy, then that which is representative of him in the name of an image will necessarily be holy. 
So if I'm left-handed in my real state as a human being, in the mirror, I will be what? Left-handed. You understand what I'm saying? When I look in the mirror, whatever my left hand is doing in the real image, my left hand will be doing it in the mirror image. You see, the, the word image comes in now. So whatever the reality is, the image will be. So Christ is exactly everything that God is. The physical representation, that which may be known of him. And God says, I am holy. If he is holy, and Jesus said, I and my father are one. Jesus said, why do you still wonder about this relationship between me and my father? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. He's trying to tell us, I am God made flesh. Now, if you believe that, then everything you believe about God becomes true about Christ. Now, for every person that has come into Christ, what do you think you came into? Some people don't like to say it, but I can give you at least two scriptures where the scriptures say that if you are the offspring of God, what does that make you? God. You can qualify it as small letter G out of respect for Jehovah, Father of Jesus Christ, the owner of big letter G. But it doesn't change the fact that the child of a lion is a lion. To that degree, if God is holy, by the very fact that we are in his image, in Christ, we become holy. So Adam, who was made in the image and likeness of God, was what? Holy, like God. Priest Adam was holy. Jesus Christ, whether you want to call it before cross or after cross, Jesus Christ, holy, image of God. Every Christian, every person who understands what it is to be in Christ is what? Holy, because Christ is holy. Stop defining it on the basis of something that you do, because then you become the measure of it. And that is what makes for the error when we start to become the measure of it, when the thing starts to be defined in us. So our holiness, therefore, is described ab initio by the quality of being in Christ. He makes us holy, not what we do. What we do is only a reflection of the fact of our holiness. And I'm out of time. And therefore, out of here. But we'll do this again tomorrow. Same time. And until then, Shalom. <laughs>